is our finest hour. Our greatest season lies ahead of us. God knew that we would be greater together. If you've been with us in this 40 days of prayer and promise, we've been praying as a greater together building campaign. And we want everyone to be involved with that 100%. And if everyone's involved, watch what God can do for the next hundred years through this place. Now tonight is very similar. We are making a covenant before God for the next two years. We're saying before the Lord, with witnesses in the room, this is what I believe God has asked me to do in giving sacrificially. Less than a year ago, all of us collectively came together and said, we want to see this building initiative happen. And so we raised $3.8 million in pledges, and just this month, we hit our $2 million mark, and all because of you and your faithful giving. So we just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And I just want to remind you, of a prophetic word that has been spoken over you for over a year now. In fact, it was where future and hope was derived from. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That is your word from God where He promises you that His plan is to make sure that you do not get harmed through this journey called life. Yeah, let's extend that clap one more time to the Lord. How awesome is our God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And thanks a million to each and every one of you. What we are celebrating here today is two years, four years, shall we say, 23 years in the making. Even before uh, New Hope was planted, God was planning for this moment right here. And it's important to have milestones in life because life is so busy, we can keep rolling right into the next thing without stopping to just think about how far it is that God has brought us. I think about some milestones that we'd rather ignore, like our birthdays. Right? You guys there with me? Yeah, tomorrow I turn 44 years old. And uh, yes, thank you. Um, and uh, and, and it was, this past year has been so awesome and also some really hard things that I don't know if you ever have years like that where you feel like you've aged a couple of years within one year, but I feel like my, my uh, beard is way too gray for where, I, where it is that I'm at today. And I was thinking about that, how every single year, is before we let it pass into the next year, is an opportunity for us to stop and reassess where we are. Where is the soil of our soul? What condition is it in? Is it soft? Is it open to the fruit of the Holy Spirit to grow? Is it hard? Is it somewhere in between? I was thinking about this as, uh, as actually last week, after our services, and we had a meeting after our service, so we didn't get out of here until probably 3.30. We didn't get home until 4, and we promised the boys we would take them to the pumpkin patch, right? And, uh, and so uh, it closes at 5, so we, we got home. We said, okay, everybody in. And we had, had gone there uh, before and had such a wonderful time. You know, it's just a great tradition to be able to go in. We love to carve pumpkins and throw, you know, pumpkin guts at each other. It's just, it's, it's a thing we do in, in the Burgess house. And, and we, just, we just loved it. And so we went there and we were talking about the stories as we're driving there, you know, uh, to Waimanalo and, and the pumpkin patch there. And we're talking about how it was last time and the pumpkins that we found. And they got lemonade there and, uh, you know, hay rides and all that kind of stuff. And we roll up there, and, um, and it was clear to me that we had waited way too long to come to the pumpkin patch. Because when you go to the pumpkin patch, and it's more patch than pumpkin, you realize you've waited too long. When you go to the pumpkin patch, and you realize why the pumpkins are half off, because there's only half a pumpkin, you realize that you've waited too long. In fact, I think I have, yeah, look, look at that there. 
That's our family picture. You know how you want that family picture, right? With the beautiful pumpkins and, well, that's ours. Yes, it's fall, everyone. There, there you go. Happy Thanksgiving. Look at that. We're, we're like walking through a barren wasteland and there's like flies buzzing around the carcasses that are left around the, the pumpkins. And let's just say it was less than what we had pictured. And as I head into uh, uh, my, my 44th year, I don't want that to be what the landscape of my soul looks like. So guess what we had to do? And what was our solution? We went to Costco. <laughs> because Costco has them for half the price and they pick the pumpkins for us. Now, that's convenient, right? But that's not real discipleship. In fact, the, Eugene Peterson, one of my favorite authors who did the message paraphrase, he just recently passed away and he wrote a book called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. I love that definition of discipleship. Discipleship is a long obedience in the same direction direction. Isn't that good? It's not just a one-off thing. It's not something that's just going to happen overnight. It's not something that's going to happen in a day. It's something that's going to happen daily. And I think that really applies to what it is we've been talking about as we finish out our series, our Breaking Ground series on the soils that Jesus has been talking about. If you and I want to go from the hard ground to the soft soil, it's not going to happen overnight. This has been a process that God has been taking us through all month long. And yet, when God finally brings us to the place where we are fruitful, where we are growing, where we're seeing the things and the word of God planted in our life coming to pass, guess what? It doesn't stay this way. You have to maintain it. It's a long obedience in the same direction. God has not called us to live a Costco Christianity. We don't just get to show up, have someone else fill our baskets with someone else's fruit. I don't get the benefits of your prayer life. I only get the benefits of my prayer life. I don't get the benefits of you journaling. I only get the benefits of me getting into the word of God. I don't get the benefits of you taking the uh, praise and the prayer and beginning to work the hard soil, beginning to deal. Deep, dig deep below the shallow roots, beginning to work past the thorns and the weeds of your worries in order to get to the place where you can receive the fruit of God's work in your life. You can do that work, but I don't get the benefit. I can't just roll up with my cart and go, hey, I'm so glad you've been spending time with God this week. Can I have those blessings? No, it doesn't work that way. You and I get the blessings from God because we put the work in for the soil of our soul. And in that perspective, that long obedience in the same direction, you and I can understand we won't have a soul that looks like the pumpkin patch that we showed up at. That instead, when people show up in our life, they will see a bountiful fruit. They will see a place that is fresh and flowing and moving with the word of God and the spirit of God. Let's review again. Jesus' parable of the sower that we've been studying all month long, Matthew 13, one through nine. And that same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat in it. And some gospels say that he had the boat pull out a little bit from the shore. Well, all the people stood on the shore, and then he told them many things in parables, saying a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. When the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. And still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. How, whoever has ears, let them hear. Now, hearing is pretty important to the process of fruit producing. If you and I want to have a fruitful life, we all have ears. Go ahead and pull on your ear. Don't pull on your neighbor's ear. Just yours. Just yours. We all have ears. The question is, are we putting them to good use? I don't know if you guys ever thought about this, but when you have a crowd of thousands of people gathered around you with no amplification system like I have, I can talk to all of you because I have a mic right here. Jesus didn't have one of those. How in the world did he get his message out to all of those people telling them the story of the soils? Well, a lot of scholars believe he actually used the technology that was there with him. Technology, what are you talking about? Yeah, you see, he got in the boat, 
He had the boat back up a little bit from shore. And have you ever noticed that you can be in the ocean and talking way over there and someone all the way on shore can hear you because of the echo, the echo of the sound goes across the water and reaches the ears of the hearers on shore. It increases the echo, it increases the, the volume with which Jesus was talking. How creative is that? Not only is he creative in how he's talking about our soul, he's also creative in how he's communicating it. What does that have to do with anything? I really believe that when the people of God use what it is that God has given us, when we use the things that has given us around us to advance the gospel, that we will see more fruit as a result. Jesus telling the story about how to live a fruitful life actually tells it in a way that is fruitful. What good is it going to do if he tells the story and the sound is dampened by the first hundred bodies or so? Because that's what happened. The sound would stop right there. So he backs away and the sound is amplified over the water and he can tell thousands of people the story of the soul and the soils and the seed. You see, what we're celebrating here today is simply our desire to be able to use everything that God has entrusted to us for the sake of the gospel. Jesus used a boat and a lake. You and I, we're going to use technology. We're going to use sound. We're going to use creativity. We're going to use lights. We're going to use this building that God has entrusted to us for what? To continue to call everybody from the hard ground from the shallow, rocky ground, from the weedy and thorny ground, filled with worries, to the place where you and I are fruitful. But as we talked about, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take patience. What are you waiting for? Well, what you plant with patience will produce lasting fruit. That's what Jesus is trying to not only illustrate, that's what he's trying to tell us. When he says, whoever has ears, let them hear, this is the words for someone who is actively listening, someone who is leaning in, someone who is working to understand. You see, I can get up here and say anything that I want, but unless you are actively engaging the words that are coming from my mouth, I could just be going like this. Right? And you guys, you guys, it wouldn't make any difference whether words are coming out of my mouth or no words are coming out of my mouth unless you're putting these ears to good use so they're connecting to your heart and then connecting to your hands and feet. It doesn't do any good. So why do we stop listening? Because we get impatient. This is taking too long. I'm done. I'm done trying to work with this hard ground. I'm done trying to dig deeper. It's too hard. I'm done with all these weeds. This is too frustrating, right? And God is saying, no, no, keep listening. I'm gonna show you how to get from here to here if you will plant with patience. Nothing is going to grow overnight, right? Nothing is gonna happen quickly. You and I have to understand this. And look, look when he explains to the disciples about this. In Luke 8, 15, he says, but the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with what? Okay, so I take a seed like this, and I put it in the ground like this, this soft soil, because I've been working with the Lord. I've been repenting. I've been letting God bring me deeper. I've been giving him my worries. Now my, so my soil of my soul is ready for God to work. I allow him to plant the promise of God. And then what happens? I wait, and I wait some more, and I keep on waiting, right? Because here's the deal. You and I want fruit, or do we want fungus? Ask yourself that question. Strange question, right? Do I want fruit, or do I want fungus? If you were sitting at a menu, which would you order? Most of us would order, I'd like fruit, please. Fungus, you can, you can keep that to yourself. Because fungus will grow really quickly, Fungus will grow overnight in the right conditions. Fruit, however, takes time. Fruit is going to take you and I planting something in patience, and over time, a long obedience in the same direction, we will begin to see what it is you see here. We will begin to develop fruit in our lives, but it's not going to happen overnight. 
And what we're celebrating here with our Breaking Ground Future No Hope celebration is exactly that. That what's happened here has not happened overnight, has it? No, it's taken a really, really long time. Some of us have been waiting here for 23 years for God to give us a building, for God to give us a place where we can build a home and make a home to others. In fact, even the chairs that you guys are sitting on, you know the previous chairs that we had? Well, let's just say we got our money's worth out of them. Since 1999, we had those chairs. And so we waited we saved, we invested, we gave, and now we're sitting on the product of that investment saying we wanna put our very best out towards the people that we invite to come here. Some of us have been waiting 23 years not only for our own building but for a place to invite people to park. We've looked at this picture of this building that we're supposed to have and we're like, when is it gonna come? And some of us may have been tempted to say, you know what, I'm not gonna complete my giving because this thing is taking too hard. But look at this cafe here. I mean, this started out in 2010 as King's Table, where we just simply came and we got some really good food, and it blossomed into this amazing idea called Cafe Fusion and the New Hope Cafe. Well, I got great news for you. Because of your faithful giving, what we're celebrating here today, as good as this is, it's going to be 100 times better when we move it over to the other side of the building. We're going to have so many seats, probably seating for 100. The restaurant is going to be even more complete. We're going to have room for your small groups, for your live groups. You can invite people to come and meet you for your business, have business meetings there. And we're moving it because that's going to be our brand new entrance over there. By the way, have you tried this amazing coffee? It is so Good. Mm -mm. You really got to try this, especially the nitro brew. I know you're thinking, hey, John, you don't need more caffeine, but I think I do. I think I do. So as we walk by these bathrooms here, these bathrooms are okay, but maybe some of you haven't realized we have brand new bathrooms right on the other side of the building, and they are amazing. It's like walking into a Nordstrom bathroom. And as we walk right by here, our amazing resource center, we're always trying to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. We're going to have a brand new bookstore just on the other side. It's going to kind of like be when you walk into... The, uh, the place in the mall where it has the food, it has the drink, it has everything that you need all in one spot. And, and I know that some of us have been waiting for a really long time. We've been waiting for God to do something. You know how many spots we looked at? 17 different locations before we finally found this one acre spot on the entire island of Oahu that God said, this is your home. I want you to dig your roots in deep. So I think it's clear from just those couple of examples that we wouldn't even be where we were here today if you hadn't been willing to plant in patience and see great results, lasting results. And so if we're going to see that, we also have to look at, okay, Jesus said we need good soil. We have good soil. I mean... Just take a look at this amazing uh, management team that we have here. Pastor John, Pastor Cindy, Pastor Justin, Pastor Tim, Pastor Ken. This is good soil right here. And you guys are good soil. So we got good soil. Okay, good seed? Yeah, we got good seed. It's because it's the word of God. And everything we're doing is to get the word of God out there. So if we got good soil and we got good seed, then maybe this is a good time to go big with our giving. In fact, you can fill that in in your second blank there. Let's go big with our giving. So you see, we're going to be smashing some walls in this place. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. When you and I come up to a roadblock in our life, it usually has to do with the fact that we serve a big God, but we are thinking small. And when we think small, we give small and we see small results. In fact, if you look in Matthew 13, when Jesus is explaining the parable of the soils and the seed, what does he say? He said, when you plant the soil, some will receive a hundredfold, some 60-fold, some 30-fold. Okay, wait, hold on. 100, 60, 30. If someone was to come up to you and say, hey, what would you rather have? $100, $60, or $30? I know what I would choose. I'd go here. And the Lord is saying, when you sow big, you reap big. When you sow small, you reap small. 
And so what we're going to do here today is we're going to be a part of a prophetic act. Yes, we are breaking ground. After two years of our Future and Hope Building Initiative, we're going to break ground by breaking this wall. But I'm also praying that something happens in the Spirit, that you and I can break through our small thinking, the places where we live in a small place, and we think that God can only work within these parameters. I'm going to invite these amazing pastors to join me as I grab my hard hat. What? There is something that is not small. <laughs> My head. <laughs> Are you making a big head joke, John? No, no, no. I, look at no, this guy. Open it up. They are now open. <laughs> okay. But there's something. <laughs> there we go. There. Oh. No. <laughs> this is getting worse by the second. Okay. Where are we going with We're this, going John? With this, is that, this is something that is big to all of us. Today's your birthday. Oh. Yay! You've never heard the directional team sing ever before. We're gonna oh, please right don't. Now. Yeah. Please don't. Ready? <laughs> We're trying to celebrate here. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Pastor John. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Let's. It's not gold. It's not silver, but it's solid steel. Here you go. Is this my gift right here? Okay, let's make this stop really quickly, right? Let's all have them stop singing. All right, we're all going to hit this wall at the same time on the count of three. I need you guys to count with me. Okay, we're going to count from three to one, and then we're going to swing, and we're going to break down our small thinking. Are you ready? Tim, I'm going to try hard not to hit you. Please. Okay. On the count of three, three, two, one. Ah! All right. Now, of course, the wall didn't fall. In fact, if you want to see it fall, you'll have to tune in for the 11 o'clock service tomorrow because by that time, we will have put enough holes in this where it really will fall. But you know what can fall right now is our small thinking. And to help us do that, to help us reap a hundredfold in our investment, to give big, to give generously, to get outside of our scarcity thinking, let's go ahead and listen right now to the amazing testimony of the Kahatsus. Joey and Rachel had God begin to tear down the walls of their thinking. All they saw was limitations, but when they stepped out in faith and began to give, God gave so much back in return. As you hear their story, consider how God might want to do the same with you. Take a look. From the time we were married, we had both been attending church for some time, and we had both made commitments and accepted Christ in our high school lives. But together as a couple, we've been growing over this last seven years. We went through a financial ministry class with Andy Pike, and um, I think it was through that class that he taught us about stewarding our money well, and one of the topics that came up was tithing. Rachel um, may share, but she's always been very faithful with her tithing. But admittedly, tithing was never a big part of my worship and my faith. I, in retrospect, was probably more tipping God rather than making an intentional, faithful act of giving. It was through that ministry that I would say for myself, I was very convicted that this was an area of my faith that I needed to grow and stretch. And I would say that was the first time we made the decision as a couple to start tithing regularly. For us, we had a goal of wanting to purchase a home. It was just something that felt so far off. You know, how we're living day to day and how do we save enough for a down payment? I would get very caught up in the day to day stress and anxieties of finances, um, our relationship. We've actually had three miscarriages and admittedly a lot of sadness, a lot of frustration, a lot of prayers of why God, why, why this, why, why are we having so much trouble having a child. We kept praying and we uh, incorporated you know, tithing as part of our worship and our relationship with God. So when it becomes to, are we going to be faithful in tithe, are we going to recognize that it all comes from God, is that leap of faith that we're going to give God the first 10% and trust that all of these things are going to be provided for and 
everything's going to be okay. And so for us, we've, we're coming to find that, yes, God does provide, and He is more than able. There were definitely moments when certain bills or expenses came in that it was a stretch of, okay, do we still write that check? Do we still make that payment? But I can say that, you know, God always gave us that peace that, you know, this is the right thing to do, and this is what I would like you to be doing in this season of your life. It seems as if God always asks something and then you act in faith, but then there's a little bit more. He takes you a little bit further after that. And for us, that little bit further kind of came as a part of the building campaign. Um, so even with the tithing, for me, it was a stretch. And then when the whole building campaign came up, um, <clears throat> would we be willing to give more above and beyond the tithe, you know, towards a building campaign? And we had prayed about it and um, we had given. And so that was a little bit of a stretch too. Every time we did that, it was always a little bit scary because you do that and then sometimes unexpected bills occur or, or some, something costed a little bit more than you expected. And, but then we had pledged to give. And so you remain faithful to give that amount that you pledged. It is nice to go from being stressed about those things and having this journey and realizing that God is going to take care of us and having that peace. It's you know, already been amazing to see the fruits of our gift. This past year has been so amazing that there's been so many things happening in our lives. We were able to have the fund to purchase of our first home. The baby that we've been praying for came this year. We were just floored and felt so blessed and so happy. And I feel like looking back at this journey that we've been through as a couple, um, I think it was really a faith journey and God saying that um, if you can trust me with this piece of your life, your faith, then maybe we can trust, I can trust you with a little bit more. I think the, the best way to sum up that powerful testimony is that faithfulness produces fruitfulness. That God wants every one of our lives to be fruitful. Not just having some fruit every now and then, but fruitful no matter what age, no matter what season, no matter how hard things are. And he invites us to do that in this way. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8, it says this, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, not just when things are great, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. How many of us want to abound in every good work? Yeah, he tells us how. He said, you can live a consistent, you don't have to live this up and down Christianity. Yeah, the world is up and down, but you can live consistently fruitful by living a life of giving. That truly, when we become givers, that's when we really start living. And I, I think back to where this whole thing started on Commitment Sunday two years ago. I think back to when each of us grabbed our envelopes and we held them up before the Lord. And we prayed about what it is that God would have us do. We embarked on a journey that as a church we'd never done before. Hey, we've seen some amazing thing happen at our church, but we've never built anything. We, we stepped out as a generation to say, you know what? We are going to set up success the next generation through our faithful giving. Now, just like the Gahatsu family, I'm betting you have been tested in that commitment. When you got up here and walked across the bridge that we had up over here, you knew you were stepping from one way of living to another way of living. And here's what I loved about each and every one of you, young and old, of every generation, every color. I loved that everyone was cheerful 
in their giving. Look at this. Look at, look at these pictures. These bring, I, I, I almost start crying because I remember this moment so clearly two years ago as each and every one of you guys took, uh, just not giving out of compulsion, but giving because God was asking you to give and you made your commitment. And now all of that cheerful giving has resulted in the place that you and I now can expect, according to the promise of God, a fruitful life. And that's where we come to right here and right now. If you guys would get out this envelope. For some of us, we are going to pay down the rest of our future and hope building commitment. Some of us, you're brand new here to New Hope, and you weren't here two years ago when we started this, but you're saying, I would like to be a part of investing into that. Well, I'm glad to hear that, because we still have another 2.4 that we need to complete in order to not have to take out a loan for the church. And I'm believing by faith that there's some of us who weren't a part of the initial commitment, and you're saying, you know what, I want to be a part of planting that. Because I want you to look at this as if this is your seed. And you have all the potential in the world for growing into everything that God has had for you. But guess what? This seed is useless until it does what? It's planted in the ground. And once we plant it, which is that giving process, once we by faith give what it is that God's asked us to do, that's when he does his part. We do our part by giving in obedience. He does his part by bringing about the fruit. So... I just want to take a few minutes at the end of this service for us to just prayerfully consider what it is that he would have us do. We're going to have a big old celebration under the Ohana tent right after service. We've got free food, music, all that stuff. It's going to be really fun just to thank you. But right now, I want to thank God. I want to thank God for what it is that he's done. And I want us to each hold this envelope in our hands and ask God, What would you have me give? Again, not out of compulsion, but as a cheerful giver, giving what it is that he would ask us to do. You have that? Let's just hold it up before the Lord. God, this is the seed that you've given us. This is that place of promise. God, where even as we were hitting that wall, you are knocking down some things in our mind and in our heart, God, that has put you in a box and as a result has put our future in a box. But God, we hold this seed up before you, and we know, God, that you have given us good ground. This is good soil. This is 23 years of fruitfulness. God, and consistent fruitfulness over the last 23 years. This is good ground to invest in, but this is really not about us. This is about the next generation. This is about the ones who have not come to know Christ yet, and will come to know Christ in this place in this very location because of what we choose to invest in right here and right now. So God, we just silence ourselves before you and during this song, we're just gonna wait on you. We're just gonna allow you, God, to move upon us. God, if it's something that we've already committed to, God, then we're gonna follow it through to the end. If it's something brand new, God, that you would place upon our heart, we're gonna obey you in that too. We thank you, God, for what it is you're doing in this place and the fruit that's going to come from this decision. In your name we pray. Amen. So I don't want you to fill this out yet. As we sing about the future and the hope that God has given us, I want you to ask the Lord, what would you have me give? And then I'll come up in just a couple of minutes, and before the Lord, we will cheerfully give to Him.
ushers come forward, I just want to invite us to take the seed that we have and put it into the ground. If you have your pledge already with you, you came prepared, then please just put that in the envelope and you can put that in the bucket as it passes by. If you're saying, hey, I really want to do this, I want to finish my pledge, or I want to get in on planting into this good ground, but I don't have the money with me, then just mark that on the envelope saying, I'm giving towards my existing pledge, I'm giving above and beyond my pledge, or I'm giving a one-time gift. As it, Just letting the Lord know and letting us know, hey, I'm in on this 100%. So if we could have the ushers come forward right now, we're just going to pray over this offering. And we're going to invest into our future and a hope. We're going to plant this good seed in this good ground. We're going to yield the results of living the generous life. God, we just thank you, God, for this moment of faith. God, money really tests us, Lord. It really tests our trust. Money really reveals, God, where our heart is at and how much control we have given over to you. But today, God, I'm looking out at some of the most generous people I've ever met. They teach me what it looks like to live the generous life. And God, we thank you for how far you've brought us. We thank you, God, for how much you've done in the last 23 years, over the last four years of Greater Together and Future and Hope. And we thank you, God, for what it is you're going to do in this moment right now as we give by faith, not out of compulsion, not out of guilt, not out of manipulation, but out of obedience. Because obedience releases blessings. And we can't wait to receive everything that you have for us as we walk by faith in this moment. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen. You can pass the baskets. okay with a little bit of dust, a little bit of dirt. You guys can look with me and vision for the next two years and understand that things may be a little messy and some walls knocked down. It's unto a fruitful future, not just for us, but for the next generations. Can you guys see that with me? Can you guys do that with me? Can we begin to think big the way that it is that our God has taught us to? Let's go ahead and sing it out one more time. Thank you, Jesus. 